Yo, what is going on Comfy Gang? It's your boy Comfy Neat. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about what in my opinion are the top risk factors for becoming a Neat. And before we get started, um, I just have to kind of say that there are probably way more risk factors that I haven't thought about or that I deliberately didn't include in this list because firstly, there are way too many and secondly, I feel that many of the things that I'm going to mention in this video encompass a lot of the risk factors that I've omitted. So you could sort of see them as being categories that, you know, include all of these different risk factors that I don't mention. So anyways, let's start the video. So the first risk factor is a pretty obvious one, and that would be being born after the 90s. And you might be wondering why I chose this time period specifically. And the reason for that is that generally um, people born after the 90s uh, have been born in an age where they are exposed to the internet in their developmental years. And the reason I place so much importance in this is because the internet is probably one of the one of the key risk factors in itself that causes a person to become a need. So really I should just be saying the internet, but you know, obviously people in boomers, for example, weren't exposed to all to the internet when they were growing up. But anyone born after after the nineties and maybe like the late eighties definitely was. And during your formative years, like your teenager your teenage years or even your childhood years, your brain is undergoing a lot of change and adaptation. And when it when it's exposed to something as profoundly, you know, influential as the internet, because well firstly it's basically, you know, this this nonstop stream of information that is, I guess, more and more so being designed to be highly addictive. And when you're exposed to when you're exposed to this in your formative years, you basically become hopelessly addicted to it. Uh, be it social media, YouTube, uh, the millions of different video games and TV shows and series and things out there, and Another reason why it's such a big factor is not just because of its um, influence on the formation of your brain when you're growing up, but it's also that I feel like the internet is probably the number one, both the number one cope and the number one thing that entraps people in a state of needdom because it's basically allows you the ability to endlessly consume uh, media and you know, endlessly give your brain these dopamine hits, which uh, your brain is constantly chasing. And it also uh, is highly addictive and makes it so that you're, um, I don't know, you're essentially desensitized to a lot of different things that you otherwise normally, uh, you know, wouldn't be des desensitized to, that you would normally find enjoyable, you know, productive things, but you don't find them enjoyable because you're brain is essentially fried from consuming way too much media and just consuming or I don't know partaking in the internet in general uh, so that's why that's my first risk factor uh, which is being born after the 90s uh, yeah I guess obviously um, you know everyone now has especially everyone alive now has access to the internet but you're probably more likely to get addicted to it if you were exposed to it in your formative years. That's why I mentioned being born after the 90s. So the second risk factor would probably have to be mental illness and disability. And I'm lumping these uh, two things together because I feel like they fundamentally uh, cause need them in the exact same ways, which is uh, they impair a person's ability to function in society, to function in the world, and to interact in the world normally. It's just that the difference is that one is physical in terms of like disabilities, and one is, you know, mental in terms of mental illness. And um, so in terms of like what disabilities in particular, we're talking about things like 
you know, having all of your limbs chopped off, even just like losing your hands, which is the most important part of your body, arguably, or blindness or, you know, being paralyzed, that probably will force you to become neat. And when it comes to things like mental illness, well, that's where it gets more interesting because I'm referring to things like autism, social anxiety. So these are mental, any mental illness that causes you to have extreme social deficits or any mental illness that basically impairs your ability to, you know, deal with the outside world. So things like schiz paranoid schizophrenia, uh, catatonic schizophrenia, um, maybe dissociative identity disorder, depending on what the personalities are like and how severe it is, but just things of that nature, which, uh, just make it extremely hard for you to function. Therefore, I'm listing mental illness and disability as my second risk factor. The third risk factor would probably have to be, um, you know, adverse childhood experiences, which is just having a bad childhood. And obviously there are so many types of bad childhoods that can happen to you just like mental illnesses where there's so many different mental illnesses which impact you in different ways. But uh, fundamentally, they all lead to fairly similar outcomes, which is, well, a bad adulthood. <laughs> and um, so let's take uh, bad parenting, for example. So let's say your parents, your parents can either be way too strict and way too abusive or they can be way too lenient and way too, you know, coddle, they coddle you basically. And both of these uh, types of parents can have extremely different impacts on the child. But um, at the end of the day, that child somehow finds a way to become neat because, well, they're basically, uh, you know, it, they're basically predisposed to having various mental illnesses uh, and, you know, just behaving in various ways, having weak personalities and all for different we for different reasons. Um, uh, for example, low self-esteem or, you know, things like that, low self-esteem, they're more likely to be bullied, their lack of character, lack of work ethic, things like that, uh, despair, nihilism, all that. And also bullying is another example of this where it's not the same as parenting, but obviously I feel like people who are bullied um, in their childhood and teenage years are more likely to become neat because while well, the risk of becoming socially anxious or um, just social phobic, having agoraphobia, things like that, um, yeah, it's just a consequence of bullying. And trauma, um, all of these different uh, traumatic experiences that happen in your formative years definitely play a role in uh, people becoming neat because of how they cause you to uh, not function properly, to be broken basically. So the third, um, third risk factor would probably have to be uh, economic conditions. And when I say economic conditions, it's like what I mentioned previously where, you know, two things on the opposite end of the spectrum can lead to similar outcomes just with different causes. So obviously when I say economic conditions, I'm mostly referring to poverty because while well, with poverty, you're less likely to be exposed to, you know, certain ideas, you're less likely to have better education, um, you're, best like, you're less likely to, um, you know, I don't know, to have lots of things. And you're more likely to experience a lot of stress, a lot of the things, the aforementioned things that I, in terms of like adverse childhood experiences, um, you're more likely to be bullied. You're more likely to, um, yeah, just have a hard time. And also you're probably less likely to not all the time, because obviously some people, uh, you know, 
end up making it out of poverty and it can be like a thing that drives them to work hard. But on the other hand, you have people who just buckle under the pressure, like, and I guess it's all down to genetics, your genetic predisposition to, um, you know, stress and whatever adversity. And on the other hand, you have, uh, you know, being born in like first world countries where I guess you're surrounded by all these modern amenities and luxuries like the internet, obviously, and, you know, cheap food and, you know, you likely have parents who own their own home and a comfy home at that. So it's probably nice to stay in that home. And um, yeah, so that's kind of like on the opposite end of the spectrum where you're basically uh, in a way lucky enough to live in conditions where you're allowed to be neat. That would be probably referring to someone like me, but pretty much anyone who lives in first world countries, well, I guess, and again, being born in modern times, uh, you're most likely to become neat that way. Uh, let me just quickly check on the other risk factors that I wrote because I'm kind of forgetting. So it actually turns out that I'm down to the last thing on my list. So um, because I was supposed to talk about uh, bad childhood experiences and bullying separately, but now that I think about it, they should be in one category. So anyways, um, the, last, um, the last thing on the list would probably have to be genetics. And um, this is gonna be a pretty controversial one because no one likes to think that, well, you know, they were born to be a neat, they were born to be a failure, they were born to be completely and utterly useless. But the fact of the matter is, is that, well, it's not the fact of the matter, it's just my opinion, but um, I feel like, you know, if, for example, you are, you know, you are born, uh, let's say, you're scrawny, you're weak, you're short, or you're naturally predisposed to be overweight, or, or you have like an ugly face, all these things, for example, uh, end, up, uh, end up causing you to be treated uh, poorly by other people and makes you more likely to be bullied, makes you less likely to be treated well by your parents, by your relatives, and it leads to all the outcomes which I, which I mentioned below. Also, things like a predisposition to addiction, having an addictive personality, um, well, yeah, that obviously would make you predisposed to being addicted to the internet um, and pre or predisposed to be being addicted to a lot of other things. And obviously addiction is a mental illness in itself and a pretty catastrophic one at that if it's left unchecked. Um, then you have things like, um, you know, how smart you are. Obviously, if you are not the smartest person, then you are less likely to do well in school, less less likely to have access to high paying jobs that would incentivize you to actually be in the workforce because let's face it, who really wants to work the traditional minimum wage job nowadays? It just seems hellish and boring. And on the other hand, you actually have people who are too smart. And when I say too smart, I mean, they're smart enough where they're capable of um, rationalizing a lot of different uh you know bs like for example um for example uh a smart person i forget there's like a high correlation between intelligence and mental illness but i think it makes sense because generally speaking uh you know smart people are more likely to let's say uh they're more effective at finding evidence for things so even if it's um things like their own uh, negative beliefs about themselves, they'll be able to find, uh, you know, find numerous examples and hold those examples in memory. And, you know, I guess in a way process them and ingrain these thoughts more deeply in their, I don't know, in their, integrate them into their personality better. Whereas someone who's not as smart might actually, um, you know, forget about negative negative experiences or you know how they're bullied they might 
ease more easily um, you know let go of their negative beliefs about themselves so that's kind of in a funny way a bigger risk factor as well and also there's I don't know I don't know how true this is but you know there's also the saying that you know smart people tend to be lazy as well I'm not sure how true this is could be just major cope by dumb people who want to think that they're smart so I have no idea but um yeah that's I guess another aspect of genetics and also just the fact that it's interesting how a lot of neats uh, that I've seen on YouTube on you know including myself we all seem to have this very similar body type of well obviously there's the overweight ones and then you have there's two types of needs basically in terms of body type there's the overweight ones and then you have the ones that basically look like uh, ET where they have like the pretty large head with a naturally high hairline and uh, you know skinny fat skinny fat uh, fat distribution where they are extremely scrawny but somehow manage to have a lot of belly fat at the same time and they basically look like ET or you know how the, uh, the greys look like you know like those aliens with the, the big heads and the weirdly shaped bodies that's pretty much what a lot of needs look like as well obviously not to that extreme but I think it is a pretty common body type my body type used to look like that a lot more before I started working out but if you saw how I looked before you could immediately tell that I was more predisposed to being a need so that's in my that's in my opinion why genetics are also another risk factor because I feel like all these things are pretty much genetically determined you know for the most part in combination with with some environmental environmental influence but yeah anyways that's gonna that's gonna end this video so anyways uh make sure to like to like and hit the subscribe button down below if you enjoyed this video and this is company signing out